this is um, uh, the escape in the graph uh, chapter and uh, in this uh, in this chapter chapter we are going to to learn how to escape the constraint of a reactive graph basically um, a reactive graph uh, builds the fundamental uh, blocks for a shiny app so it's important to to have a clear graph uh, because this is the the main reason because the the, the app uh, will work smoothly and, and better so at the end of this uh, um, notes this chapter this explanation uh, we should be able to understand what are the the escaping of a reactive graph constraint and what are the techniques to to solve the eventually uh, this concern. Um, so let's see um, that this um, to to uh, the the, uh, the graph. Uh, so the reactive graph um, is uh, is made to, uh, as I said, identify the connection of the app. Uh, and to, uh, let's say, um, identify the escaping of the graph uh, and, and to have a graph, basically, we need to use a reactive val as a function, observe and observe event, as uh, has been said in the previous chapters. So this, these functions um, will, uh, will be able to uh, make the app reactive. So the, the, the input sent uh, in the app will react uh, and uh, um, this reaction will be shown uh, in the uh, reactive graph. Uh, basically, we want to understand what's happening inside the app and how to escape the constraints of the uh, reactive graph. Uh, as I said, um, this, this function here, reactive val and serve and observe event, are function. And the book suggests to use, um, to use them in uh, little chunks of the app. So just keep, try to keep them separate from the rest, because otherwise it, it, um, the result inside the graph result more complicated. So for, and for, um, this is the same reason for, for which uh, the book suggests to isolate part um, of, um, of the app using um, escaping functions, basically. To, to have an idea, uh, because I don't know if, if everyone that is following uh, has uh, fully understood what is uh, a reactive um, part of the a shiny app. So basically, uh, to recap, uh, reactive programming um, is will be used to specify a graph of dependencies. So when an input changes, all related output are automatically updated. This is what happening when you apply uh, a reactive function and you see uh, see through a reactive graph um, and it basically describes how input and output are connected in the inside an app okay and this as i said previously it's very powerful for you to understand if it's your app uh, would will work smoothly or if you can arrange it better this is a uh, visualization of what's happening inside an app uh, and the arrow indicating the direction of the reactivity, so the action inside the app. Uh, from the UE, we send an input that reaches the server and then if we add a reactive and an observer, we have these two um, actions uh, going to, um, to appearing outside uh, with the, um, with an output. Um, basically, uh, 
um, as you have seen in the in uh, the beginning of the the chapter we are going to combine the reactive values connect the right and the left side and then uh, we can create infinite loops and so we can as we can create it we can stop them to uh, to set up the app better so to combine uh, the directive values we have uh, uh, basically um, uh, basically a reactive graph shows the connection and um, shows the the direction of the reactivity and as you may know, and then we, we will see this uh, in practice. When a connection is not in use, the graph, I'll, the directive graph, highlights it in gray color. So that part of the connection is invalidated. This, what, what this means? This means that uh, after that, if you have uh, a um, reactive uh, um, connection uh, which uh, basically erase everything you have done it before and this uh, this is escaping the graph so the graph do doesn't show it uh, okay so we need to 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 solve this we need to modify the value of a reactive value uh, use this function uh, and then uh, so the reactive val and values, and then the observe or observer event in the server. Basically, then we go directly into a practical example, because I don't want to make uh, too much confusion. And so if we see the, an example, so that will be much clearer. So this is the first app that you find in the chapter. And uh, this is the output of, of the app. So just you, you need, it, the app asks you to put your name. I've changed this slightly a bit. I've said your name here instead of name, instead of nothing, nothing uh, special. Then uh, when you clear, so you ty type your name here. Uh, and then I show you uh, directly this way because if I go you see everything uh, so if I go here to enable the the reactive graph you need to obviously load the library which is the react log and then uh, call the 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 reactive graph with with this function react log enable uh, if you have more than one app, you, it, it, you will be you need to you to you to, to call it just once, not many, not all the times. So, for example, um, the app that we uh, were looking at is this one here. Okay, so you have this this app, and it said, "Put your name, uh, say your name." And it does this. When you, uh, I didn't clear, I didn't touch this button. So I do common uh, F, uh, F3, and it does open up the React um, reactive graph of the app. So this is the map of your app. So here are all the connections this simple app is making for, uh, for giving out the output that you have seen. I didn't uh, click the, the reset button yet. So at this point, the app has done just this. If I go back, uh, clicking this button, we see that everything is invalidated. So we go forward, you, you may have already seen uh, these steps, but we go forward and it gets gray, uh, sorry, green for, for you to see that is doing these steps. 
And then uh, you see that there is this uh, bit here that you can move uh, wherever you want. Uh, that is uh, part of the um, reset button. So I do clear the things and I do again command F3. You see that nothing has changed basically. The, um, so the, the, that bit of the connection hasn't been catched from the graph. So the graph stays the same. So if you have a complicated app, you may want to see uh, when you reset uh, an app or an input of an app, what, what is actually happening. And you may want to be sure that uh, the things goes as in the way you want. So it's for this reason that you need to um, like go around this thing and uh, it is suggested in the book to sketch uh, sketch down um, a graph manually uh, in a way that you can uh, uh, understand what is the basically the connection that the app is doing anytime you reset and uh, the input this is my uh, representation not necessarily correct <laughs> So this is the first part of the app. Um, the things I've used, I've used the diagram uh, package uh, in R and then settled everything like color and things. You find everything on GitHub. This is the first part of the app. And we just jump it because this is, um, I put my name, uh, it does the output. And then the second part is the action button. So I do click clear, the server uh, receives the, the things, and then it goes around back to, to the UE for you to put again an input, uh, so your name again inside and change the name. There is no, this bit here is not, uh, maybe there will be, uh, it's not important if you have just a simple app, but if you have a compli more complicated one, it will be important for you to focus on, on this, this bit. So this is the, basically the thing that happened. Uh, this is the constraint uh, of the escaping. So if we go forward, uh, basically, what should be done is to, this is again my view of the thing, uh, we should uh, connect the right side to the left side of the app. So basically, when it reaches the output, so, and you click the clear button, the observer event should go back to the UE. And you should be able to see it and repeat the things. Or maybe you just need to focus on the fact that uh, this part is happening, even if it's not. Uh, uh, okay. So basically, the book the book uh, gives uh, the um, clarification of some uh, examples through using case studies. Um, on modifying uh, multiple inputs, accumulated input, posing animation, and anti-patterns. Uh, I have saved all the apps uh, on a file, so then we can maybe discuss about uh, those ones as well. Uh, but the interesting, the, the, I've chosen this because I, I was interested in uh, loops so for example in this example um, it's used um, running uh, reactive value and then it also use an invalidate later function to as i said interrupt the loop so this is the case when uh, 
uh, we can't use uh, an observe event, but we need to solve uh, this issue because otherwise it goes, uh, it repeats itself uh, uh, many times. So we do, we we just need to use instead of observe event, we need to use observe and then isolate. Uh, the app is done very clearly uh, like this. So you have uh, uh, the action button and uh, it is shown. Uh, so you have the action buttons in the UE, start and stop. Basically the app, uh, I don't know if you have seen it there and show you uh, how it is. Uh, as to to button is start and start counting numbers and uh, until you stop them basically uh, this uh, if you if you don't stop it uh, it stops itself after 250 uh, runs uh, and then you have this function here which is isolate and you isolate each one, so anytime you want to stop it, it does stop it, basically. Uh, I'll show you the, the app, which is this one here. As I said, I don't need to recall the function reactive um, log once. Uh, this is the, 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 the simple app that showing you that you can start accounting. Uh, it does stop by itself at 250, but then you stop it. And with command, uh, command or control, if you have a window, F3, you can see the, the log, uh, sorry, the reactive graph. And as you can see, um, it shows you uh, what the app does. So the input as a start, the input as a stop, and the reactive values. And then the count. It's very nice that you can move these things um, as long as you like. You can change the things and arrange it to, to see how they could be differently. Um, then, what, uh, what I was, yeah. So, to conclude these things, then we can see the other apps. Um, the, this, is, uh, this, this, cha this chapter concludes the reactive section of the book. And uh, here I have put uh, uh, the comments for um, basically activate uh, the reactive graph. You can do it like this or, or just like this. And this is something that uh, our studio uh, say to you if you don't haven't, uh, if you haven't uh, called it uh, before. Then you, uh, as, um, these are all the things that I have said already. You can access to the uh, reactive graph this way. And um, this feature lets you see the structure of the connection made by the app. Uh, important is to uh, basically um, keep the things in small chunks. And uh, to mind is the escaping the graph status, so generated by previous condition, which the reactive graph doesn't take into consideration. So it's better to keep the condition um, in a way that uh, you can isolate them, maybe using isolate function or other, um, other function. 
then you can uh, another suggestion is to use diagrammer or any other package uh, in uh, available for scratching down uh, um, a graph so the of the connection of your app to to see what's happening if it's not clear here are some resources uh, and that's all great um okay <laughs> So, uh, so it's <laughs> any it, question, it's... and then we. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> right then. Um, so, I, I don't know. Does anyone, Andrew or Domantis? Oh, Robert's here as well. So, um, have any questions? Um, We can see maybe the other apps if you want to. Oh or, yeah, yeah. I don't, some someone has done any exercises? Has has someone done any exercises? Maybe. Oh, I'll admit I. I uh... Go ahead, Jimata. I was going to say I have one big question mark rather than specific questions because I didn't uh, I didn't prepare I didn't look into the chapter and have the time to. So it makes sense that it's very helpful to see the introduction now, but I think I need to go back and reread and go through the details of it to be able to come up with some questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the better understand it. Okay. So basically, uh, I hope it's clear to how to reach the directive graph. So how to get inside the app and see the graph. Is that clear? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And then you can modify this uh, this graph uh, as you like to to see how the connection could be uh, in a different uh, way, basically. Yeah. Okay. So. Um... I'll admit I uh, I didn't get, didn't get a chance to to do much reading. I kind of did a quick read uh, last night. Um, I I guess I feel like the the main takeaway that I got was like try to use reactives instead of reactive values and observers, and like just try to minimize how you use those. And, and if you can try to figure out how to solve it with like regular reactives um, yeah it, it's going to be a lot easier you're going to run into less headaches or less yeah. potential to run into big headaches later on if it gets too complicated yeah yeah it's it, it's interesting isn't it because the the reactive graph the, it, it goes into it in quite a bit there about how the reactive graph doesn't necessarily capture all the logical dependencies within the app because you can kind of isolate your code inside these observers and things like that. But if you, the, the, the better your code, the better the logic in your code matches the reactive structure of the graph, the more easy it will be to kind of um, use tools like the react log and 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 things and and, and and probably the easier it is to to reason about your apps to be honest i've not written an app on that size myself although i've kind of debugged a few people a few a few apps that are pretty big but um yeah i don't know it's quite it's um, um i have uh, um as well um copied that um, taken the first app in the reactive um, um, chapter, the chapter, the chapter three, mm. the first app, and then I have modified a bit, adding um, a reset button. Um, if you want, I'll show you. Okay, yeah, and then cool. we can see the graph. Um, Okay, this is the, the, the app, uh, so it was quite um, 
long and you can find it on um, uh, chapter uh, three uh, uh, here chapter uh, three basic reactivity and is uh, this up here where is it uh, uh, uh. Eccola qua. So, is this up here? Um, you uh, can uh, copy. Uh, uh, freak poly. Uh, this is the bit of the. So, the output is this one. I run the app, mm. and you can see that this is the, the app. Okay, and what I've done, I've just added this button here, the reset button. Uh, so basically, I change this this um, input, and the app changes. The dis first distribution, second distribution, and the pinned width. So things change. And then I get inside the graph with command F3 and see that this app is quite a bit more complicated than the other ones, mm. as you see. And here is the reset button I have added. Can you see? Yeah. This wasn't there before. So I've just added this bit here. Hey, it doesn't. Is it's not connected to the rest, uh, and you can see it here. Uh, so this is the first part. I've put everything uh, on a single script because it works. It's it's a simple app, so you don't need to break it in into. So I've put everything inside a script, and uh, what I've done, I have uh, added this bit action button reset. And then in the server, as I had uh, quite a certain number of things like distribution one, distribution two, the bin width, um, I had an observer event and update the numeric input and the slider input with their uh, starting values. And you can find them, you see, numeric uh, distribution and one starting volume thousand. Okay, I run it again. You can see it. This is N1, this is N2. Then you can change it and reset the uh, to as it was, and you can see common F3, and you have uh, the input, the reset button here, which is not connected. Okay, I stop sharing. Cool. I do have a question now, <laughs> I was wondering. <laughs> um, in, um, you made some manuals, uh, some nice drawings to uh, to convey the functionality of um, of the observers and and the buttons that are not represented in the in the graph. Is there some standard notation or some suggestions on how to make such uh, how to visualize um, these out of the graph? Um, links. Um, it said that you mind the fact that this is happening, and uh, if you want to understand what is happening, uh, considering the fact that you are using an action button and uh, an observer event and everything. Uh, you need to you you can scratch down the graph of your app manually and then in some condition under some condition like uh, uh, condition which are recreating loops 
which are not stopping themselves or other conditions which are um, I show you um, other conditions uh, like uh, uh, you you need to these are the other apps for example and then you need to you have an observer event observe event in some cases you can as i said break down the observe and use isolate or you can use uh, uh, basically always uh, um, um, the you always use reactive values and uh, observers uh, and observe event. Sometimes you cannot use observe event, you need to, to use observe and other functions. Uh, here, um, for example, this is because I've mixed up the, the first two apps. You can see that I've put these two together. Um, when you click these things, the, the things changes, but when you get inside the graph, this is not they, they are not connected basically. Okay, so they 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 are um, there is no like something like this. Yeah. So and to solve this problem, as you said. Uh, it depends by the scope of your app, basically. So the suggestion in the book is to keep uh, this this uh, dangerous <laughs> part of the app uh, in small chunks, separate from the rest, so you, that you can visualize and uh, contain them. Yeah. And this is my understanding of the thing. And then... Uh, uh, there may be other solutions, uh, um, as I said, um, in the book here, uh, saying basically, this is chapter 16, okay, uh, when um, goes to do case studies for example this is the the the, the app that I've just open up drink and eat where one output modified multiple inputs basically uh, you need to notice this basically understand that these things is when you have a complicated app, maybe it's not evident in the, in the connection, in the browser, basically. Uh, and uh, uh, that's the, the reason why I've chosen this one. There is another one which is, um, because this gives a, a solution. You can use invalidate and observe and isolate instead and observe that for, for the loop up that I've shown before. Cool. I, I, I myself need more time. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, sorry, I, I know that it was a kind of last minute you've only really had a week's notice to uh do it and uh, a lot of the, <laughs> the reactive um part of the book has a lot of kind of conceptual stuff in it that i don't know it's a uh, a lot to think about brilliant though thanks for um doing uh, the chapter this week um